I want to look at it's also very unusual tactics there is some preparation some not and you will see how sometimes the position that looks very sharp and looks like one side attacking it all can change with one move and attacker will become attacked and hunter will become hunted like in in the matter of move or two now this is very interesting tactics and very unexpected shots well it's not some of them thematic just like they were in the last game and some of them are not this is also my game this game was against another uh, American Grandmaster um, very well known Walter Brown G it was played in New York International Tournament where towards the end we bought were kind of a uh, competing uh, for a lead in a tournament and this game was game like when neither one of us wanted a draw so I went g3 c5 bishop g2 g6 knight f3 bishop g7 c3 now I tried to uh, play a little unorthodox type of position to become to kind of mix it up to have a because I needed to win this game so c3 uh, knight c6 d4 c takes d c takes d and d5 now we have symmetrical position uh, very well known in theory e6 in this position white castled knight e7 bishop f4 castling queen d2 and knight f5 now that's the quiet move and after this move game becomes very sharp and here is why black is attacking d4 pawn white plays e3 and now black plays f6 that's the end of quiet play now black is threatening g5 to capture to trap white's bishop on f6 natural reaction is h4 and here comes h6 now g5 threat is reinstated i played g4 and now knight d6 now you see that black has all these pawns advance one square and there may be a weakness somewhere at the same time white white's king is a little bit exposed with the pawns on h4 and g4 and after knight d6 i played g5 here and this is positionally good move the reason why if black plays h takes g h takes g and f5 they give up the weak square on e5 maybe potentially weak square on e5 so after after g5 black played knight e4 and here is when tactics start knight takes e4 d takes e and here i play g takes h now black played e takes f question why can't black simply play bishop h8 because then when white's knight will go to e1 which is a bad square or another bad square h2 then black is going to play f5 and have a very good position white does not want to put knight on a squares like h2 or e1 well on bishop h8 there is a tactical shot that was never executed because ne black never played bishop h8 the tactical shot is queen c2 now you see that white that's a winning move 
black cannot take white's knight because queen takes g6 will result in a mate, checkmate. But then the only thing they can do is go f5, and after f5, white puts the knight on g5, getting absolutely winning position. So for this reason, black played e takes f, white played h, h takes g, king takes g7, bishop takes f3. Now white has an extra pawn, but after e5, situation changes. e5, bishop g3, e takes d, Um, and here, well, if I take e takes d, then black can simply play knight takes d4 or queen takes d4, and black is okay. Well, the move was played was rook f to d1, knight e5, bishop g2, and black played, you see that black cannot take on e3 because queen takes d8, but b black played bishop, take, bishop g4, and white, I played here, e takes d. Now, this is very interesting position. This is a positional sacrifice, and um, very intuitively good move. Uh, in this position, after uh, long calculations, and the, the black played knight f3 check. Now, black did not play bishop takes d1 because I would have played rook takes d1. Now, black has an exchange for a pawn. But knight must go to c6, otherwise on knight f7, simply bishop takes b7, getting exchange back and uh, having uh, two extra pawns. And after knight c6, d5, and on knight e5, d6. Now you can tell that black's position is very, very bad here. White has two most powerful bishops and a very strong advanced uh, pass pawn on d6. This would have been absolutely unacceptable position for black, and that's why black played knight f3 check. Bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, and rook d to c1. Now white play, tries to play rook c7 check. Let's talk about this position, and let's try to evaluate this position. This position, in this position, extra pawn by white absolutely makes, no, uh, absolutely uh, has nothing to do with the evaluation. So what is important that we have opposite color bishops? And when opposite color bishops, it's easier to conduct attack on your opponent's king. But now, and here Brown thought that he has certain advantage because white's light squares are very vulnerable. For example, maybe queen d7, queen h3. But right now, the rooks on c7 is a threat. And you see how it quickly changed. Now this becomes very tactical from here, and it's interesting how attack went from here on. Rook f7, all black needs to do to play queen d5 or bishop d5, queen d5, and maybe bishop h1, but from now on everything went real uh, bad for black. Queen d3, Attacking the bishop, and now we can say that queen d5 is not great, that great of a move because white has rook c5. So black played simply bishop d5, putting bishop on a very active position and dominating central position, bishop d5. But here it's hard to imagine that white has very strong attack, and they do. Move was h5, forcing g takes h, and now king h2. Now we see 
that the other king, after Rook G1, white, black's uh, king also will be attacked. King H2, Queen E8. Now black wants to play Queen E4 and somehow re resolve the tension. Now if I play Rook G1, black can still play Queen A4 because discover check will not do anything good for white. So what happened after Queen E8, I did play Rook E1 first to stop Queen E4 and after Rook E7, now Rook G1. Now Rook G1 is a threatening Bishop D6 check and take the Rook. And black played here Bishop E4 attacking white's queen. So where white wants their queen? White wants the queen on G file. So bishop d6 check, king h7, and queen to g3. Now, uh, black has to move the rook, rook to d7. Now we go rook a to e1. And you see that there is a threat of f3 move, and only way black can save the bishop on e4 is by playing queen to e6. And now if white moves the bishop, then black can play maybe queen to f5. But here comes the unexpected shot after queen e6. You see, uh, we, cannot play we cannot play rook takes e4 because queen is going to take on e4. And black has all three squares, g6, g7, and g8, protected by their pieces. So the move is bishop to b8. Now white disconnects black's a8 rook and uh, creates the threat of rook takes e4, queen takes e4, queen g8 check, on a king h6, queen h8 check, and on rook h7, queen takes f6 with a checkmate. So black, white has a very serious and a concrete a threat after bishop to b8. And after bishop b8, black goes queen e8 back. Now they protect the g8 square. And then rook takes e4, queen takes b8, you see, white wants to play queen g6 check and queen h8 with a mate next move. But queen g6 check is illegal move. We saw it from the last game. There is a pin. White's king is exposed. So the move is rook to e5. Now, this is a thematic move. This is thematic move, simple uh, uh, blocking the diagonal. Now, if the bishop b8 was an orthodox move and very interesting tactical threat, rook e5 is very thematic and not difficult at all. Actually, most of the combinations, they are the cute combinations and, uh, and effective combinations, they are easy to find. This is not difficult move at all. And when uh, with the threat is rook takes h5 checkmate and also queen g6 with the checkmate, so here, black played f takes e and got made it quickly after queen g6, king h8, queen h6, rook h7, and queen f6, rook g7, queen takes g7 with a checkmate. Now, this is a very interesting game. You see how initiative was stay, uh, changing hands from one move to another. First, white uh, won a pawn. Black got pressure on light squares, then white sacrificed exchange, which black did not accept, and uh, then black had dominated bishop on d5, and all of a sudden white was first opening the g file and conducting very strong mating threat. There were exchange of some interesting tactical shots. The last shot of Rocky V is very thematic and not difficult. Once you see a lot of those, you will, you will be executing them left and right. 
and you will have no difficulties at all doing it.